this is an Echo 7310. It was uh, ported by a novice lumberjack on YouTube. His name is Bodie, but uh, most of y'all are probably going to know him as novice lumberjack. It's running fine, and then it goes lean and starts acting up, but it's only doing it when it gets hot. Um, I ran a vacuum pressure test on it, same thing that he's done, and I got the same results, no leaks. Uh, something else I tried, I tried applying heat. I have a heat gun, it's digital, you can put it on all kinds of settings and turned it down low and got everything just hot enough where it was where it hurt to touch it uh, where you know you could do like that and feel that it was definitely hot um, still no air leaks so this weekend I'm gonna go run it see how it acts for me uh, before I do that I'll probably pressure test the fuel system make sure there's not an issue with the fuel line or carburetor. I'll recheck the tank vent. Tank vent's working properly. Um, and then, you know, if it's still acting, if it's acting up for me this weekend, I have a brand new cylinder. I'll swap a brand new cylinder on here. That'll help me know if it's in this cylinder or the rest of the saw, if the issue is still present. Then I know it's in the rest of the saw somewhere. Uh, at that point, I'll probably put... I mean, at that point, you'd, you'd put crank seals in it. And if it doesn't go away, then I don't know. I'll have to regroup and probably consult some other folks. But that's where I'm at with it right now. Get y'all an update this weekend. This is Bodie 7310. I think... I got it figured out. Um, gonna put his cylinder back on it because I tried it with a fresh cylinder and I tried it with a different carburetor. Um, I think it's the carburetor. So if I run it later and there's no acting up and it runs great with his cylinder then we'll know for sure it's a carburetor and not an issue on the crank on a case side of the engine so uh, when I say case side that could be a crankshaft seal on either side or the case gasket I did a, a pressure and vacuum test no leaks. This thing holds pressure and vacuum great. I didn't do it while it was hot, but when I swapped my carburetor from my saw over there to this one, this one ran great. But I also changed the cylinder first because I know that the cylinder had been tampered with and the carburetor had been tampered with just to bypass uh, the limiters. Um, so that's that's where when I'm diagnosing something that someone else has worked on, I start with what el whatever's been worked on, uh, because this issue has been persistent for the whole life of the saw. I think since Bodie has had it, not not persistent, you know, not particularly just persistent since he did the cylinder. So I'm gonna get everything swapped over, load them up go test them and we'll probably race this one in mine um, and you know that's just for shits and grins um, yeah I, don't, I really don't know who's faster and I'm not really uh, it's more of a morbid curiosity fact than to say oh I'm better than someone else because I know that there's for every person I'm better than, there's at this kind of thing, there's five or six that are better than me, so no reason to go bragging about it. But just interesting to run something built by someone else. All right, out at the test facility, and I got my 7310, a K7 
Cajun built 372 that runs like a scalded dog. And Bodie's 7310 that he built. This is the one that he had issues with some of the previous videos. Um, I think I've got the issues figured out. I have the carburetor from my saw on this one. So when I do a comparison, I'll have to pull my carburetor off, throw it back on here. Or well, I'll have to do cuts with this, with that bar and the new chain. Um, put the carburetor back on there and then do bar swap across all of them just to, just to see where everything stands. I mean, I'm just curious. He ported that cylinder totally different than I did that one. I just want to see what the difference is and how they run. Um, so I'm going to run a tanker, so a fuel through this one. Just firewooding, uh, cutting stuff up that's dry. Just to make sure that there ain't no more bugs left in it. All right, I got a tank, a fuel through it. I cut up this little pile of firewood or 90% of it, uh, you know, all these big logs, they ain't super big, you know, there's my foot, uh, but, you know, some of them I split down the middle with it, cut everything in a, in about 15, 18 inch pieces, <sighs> didn't put a huge load on it until, until these, when I started splitting them, uh, down the middle that put a real good load on it and didn't act up on me didn't go lean on me I had it tuned to uh, 2800 rpm for idle uh, most of that was fuel adjustment you know when you stab the throttle you don't want it to bog uh, so I just gave it enough fuel so that it didn't bog when you stab the throttle and then uh, I adjusted the the uh, throttle stop screw from there to 2800. And then I tuned it just a little rich on the high end. Um, I mean, it was like 10, you know, around 10,000 in the cut. You know, dip down to like 95 and jump up to about 10.5. But I'm cutting, I'll go show y'all. Cutting a big, old, dead piece of live oak. And with a sharp chain, that's the chips you get. This stuff is so old and hard and dry. Um, I want to say like red oak and white oak are around... 1800 on the Jenka hardness scale and this is like 2400 uh, or 2600 I don't exactly remember but it is way up there and it's rough on stuff so uh, that's what I tuned it in um, here's something that y'all are probably gonna go nuts over tack holder uh wonder where you get that. I'll have to show y'all. I'm trying to do the affiliate link thing where I get a little bit of money when someone buys an Amazon thing off my page. But works excellent, or so-so as a tack holder. I don't want to say excellent because it depends on the salt. But works so-so. But there was no issues with the 7310 with a different carburetor on it. So I'm going to say it's fixed. I'm going to do some bar swapping and other setting up and then have a little race. If you're wondering what kind of tractor you use to stack them locks like that, it would be an IH. That's short for International Hernia because they didn't use no tractor to stack them logs like that. And these are a little bit bigger than the ones that I've been playing with. This is Bodie 7310. Novice Lumberjack, for those of y'all that don't know his name.
swap the carb from that saw to mine, tune mine, and then I get to cut. All right, last up is my 7310. get something to drink on the way to the house and time all this and edit up the video and just for the you know, those of y'all that are curious uh, in the videos Bodie saw it took 21 seconds to make it through the log mine took 16 um, like I said transfers done up totally different um, and it was some morbid curiosity thing I just wanted to see how one that was done in his style ran uh, compared to the way that I've kind of done mine. Um, there are definitely things that I'd like to do different in mine too where I think I could improve that but you know I'm not that not even really a builder I'm just fooling around I don't have a lathe I don't know how to run a lathe so I gotta get all my machine work done uh, you know, by a machinist in town. Um, you know, it's awesome that there are people that are willing to help out some goofy redneck that wants to you know, build chainsaws. Um, not knocking them, that's just how it laid out. Same guy tuning them, same chain, bar, carb. Uh, Yeah, I made it as fair as I could. So, I did come to the conclusion that this was a carburetor issue, but I never really explained how I came to that conclusion. And I didn't do any videos of me diagnosing it that good. So, uh, I mean, all of my dump, all of my videos are kind of a, like a dumpster fire anyway. They're just thrown together and get after it but trying to determine whether this was a vacuum leak or a carb issue the saw would run it would get hot it go lean and then it shut off uh, when I did my testing I just let it sit in my yard idling with this carburetor uh, I mean it sit there and uh, run for a little while and it sounds just like when you run a tank plumb out of fuel it zipped up and quit what was strange now a vacuum leak can cause it to do that but what was strange in this case was the fuel line was totally void of fuel you may say well yeah it acted like it ran out now, the tank had fuel in it the fuel line was totally void of fuel if you have a vacuum leak something on the the rest of the saw your fuel line will not go empty it may cause the saw to run lean because it's a you know it's like you got your fuel adjusted wrong um, but it will because there are check valves in the carburetor it's just one-way valves your fuel line should never go empty so if your fuel line goes empty and your tank is full the issue is a valve in the carburetor you know probably not a leak in the rest of the saw um, the way I verified that do a carb swap I had a saw with the same carburetor 
Uh, it, this is probably going to be tag, tacked on at the very end of the video, but uh, that's the key thing to take away here. Fuel line went empty. There's a one-way valve in here, and you shouldn't have air flowing backwards through the carburetor. That's you know that's not good. That's the whole reason this thing this saw had problems.